last speaker is Max Ray, who has been involved with the Math Forum since after the Math Forum existed, and when he wrote a question to ask Dr. Math. He graduated from Swarthmore with a BA in Math and has spent two years teaching Geometry, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calculus at Chestnut Hill Academy. He works on many projects for the Math Forum, which I won't list because I'm going to let him talk now. All right, Suzanne, go. All right, so I'm going to take you guys on a problem-solving journey today. And to go on that journey, we have to go back in time a little ways because I want to take you on a journey, the journey that Phil Darrow was talking about, from a concept through the informal methods that people will do different ways um, to a procedure. Um, so we need to go back to a time before you knew any procedures for uh, dividing by a fraction. So pretend no one had ever told you to flip and multiply. Back in that innocent time, I'm curious how you would have thought about this story. Um, you have seven cups of dog food. You use two-thirds of a cup of food at each meal. So before anyone had told you a procedure for dividing by fractions, how might you have thought about that story? So I picked that story for a really specific reason. There are concepts that I think you can't help but think about when you hear that story. And so I use that story to get thinking about concepts and also to find out what my students understand about the story. So the first thing I ask them to do is not do any math. I ask them to notice and wonder. And I particularly want to know, do the students wonder how many two-third cup meals are in those seven cups? If they wonder that, then I know they have some conceptual understanding. But I want to know more about their conceptual understanding, so I ask them to estimate before they do any problem solving. And I'm listening to see how can students explain how they know, oh, it's definitely going to be more than seven meals. Oh, it definitely will last more, uh, less than 21 meals. So there's key concepts for fraction division that I care about that I ask that story um, to get elicited from my students. So the thing that I really want to know if students understand is that this problem is going to be a problem about how many of these are in that how many two-third cup meals are in seven cups. If my students have that conceptual understanding, then I know they have a tool for thinking about division. I'm also curious about their ideas about two-thirds, how big two-thirds is, what it means, because if they have the idea of two-thirds and the how many of this is in that, I know any group of elementary students or elementary teachers or um, pre-service teachers or administrators, I've done this problem with all of those groups, they can come up with some way to think about the problem. This is the most common thing I see, is that people will draw measuring cups, they will divide those measuring cups into thirds, and they will fill up two thirds by coloring them in. And they usually start with the red ones and then they're like, oh, there's more, and they fill it in. Another really common method is the counting up. Students call this guess and check. I don't know why they think they're guessing and checking here. But they start with one meal uses two-thirds cups, two meals uses one and a third cups, three meals is two cups. Some groups will then skip ahead. Um, and then every once in a while, a student says something like this. I didn't want to draw it, so I, I, I thought. And I thought there are 21 third of a cups in seven cups. And then I grouped those together to make meals. So there, there were um, 10 and a half meals. Those methods matter to me. I, I know my students don't know the way to solve this problem, but I want them to do it anyway, so that every conversation we have about fraction division comes from their thinking, and they have their methods to fall back on. Because the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to try and get to the efficient procedure for dividing by a fraction, or one of the two efficient procedures for dividing by a fraction. Um, and we're going to do it based on the student's thinking. So I'm going to invite this group of students up to the front of the room and say, can you help us all learn what you did and why you did it until the students think, yeah, I could solve another problem using their method. And we name it after whoever came up with it. And then I ask them to solve a problem with a lot of dog food. I say, OK, my puppy got bigger. We're giving him 3 quarters of a cup at each meal now. And we have 60 cups of dog food. And when they encounter 60 cups, they start to think about, well, maybe I'm going to divide the number of quarter cups into groups of three to make three meals. So when I ask them to solve 60 cups of dog food, three quarters of a cup per meal, they multiply 60 by four to ha find out how many quarter cups there are and group those into sets of three for the meals. They're dividing by three. And we look and we think, well, what are we doing here? Let's write this using some math. 60 divided by three-fourths, finding how many three-fourths are in 60, can be calculated by multiplying 60 by four and dividing by three. Um, and so you end up with 83 fourths. 
So I got my students on that journey from concept using their methods to procedures by having them look at a story, notice, wonder, estimate to bring out the concepts. And then we had student ideas, a huge variety of methods that could lead us to efficient procedures. So when I ask my students, they say, we invert and multiply, and we know the reason why. 